Hello, grade two. Time to work on your purple packet Wednesday. This one is going to be shorter because two of them are going to be done um, on your own. So the first one with reflexive pronouns, you have a Wednesday worksheet for you to type the choices on the blanks and the very bottom one where you write your own sentence with the preposition under. Don't forget capital letters and end marks are needed to make a sentence correct. All right, we're gonna move on to the uh, friendly letter and commas are needed uh, in many places in letter writing. Now, if you're not even writing a letter and you're writing a date where you have two numbers side by side, now that's not the same as when you do the one of the dash or the hyphen in between, but here we have word, number, number. Separate those numbers with a comma. The next commas are really special for friendly letters. There's no other real place that we write something like Dear Rosa. It's not a sentence, but it is something that is in a greeting of a letter. And the rules are start with a capital, end with a comma. It's not a sentence, so you don't put a period, but this punctuation is used. In the body of the letter, we'll double check. She says, I miss you. I'm looking forward to seeing you this summer. No commas needed. The next part of the letter is called the closing. And the closing uses the same rules as the greeting. Starts with a capital, ends with a comma. Not a sentence, right? All it says is your friend. It might say love. It might say your very best friend. We have one capital and a comma at the end. Final part of the letter is called the signature. No comma needed. It goes right below, lined up like that, right below. Let's take a look at our edit the sentence. It says, you can see the movie perfectly if you sit over there. All sentences need to be checked for beginnings. There is no capital here, so triple underline. All sentences have to have end marks. There is none, so we need to think about what kind we need. Again, it seems like they're just giving information. You can see perfectly if you sit over there. So that kind of sentence is declarative, which means it ends with a period. Now, you know, we've been working on those tri tricky homophones there and there, and there's actually three of them. I would think you remember all of these. I'm gonna type down here. Um, there is T-H-E-R-E. -E. I'm gonna get rid of that capital. There is T-H-E-I-R. And then we haven't practiced with this one this week, but there is T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. So they're homophones because they're all pronounced there. If you read them, you'd say there, there, there. The final one that we are not um, working on this week is the one that is equal to the two words they are. So if I said, they're going out to play, instead of saying that, I could say they are going out to play. So we're not working on that one right now. We have really been focusing on the first two. So this one with the I in it, do you remember me cluing you to say, if you see the I, say to yourself, I don't have what? What are we talking about belonging to anybody? Is it a belonging word right now? It doesn't seem to be a belonging word. I think they're talking about a place, right? So if you remember, if you can ask a question like where and answer there, or maybe even here, these words are very similar because the ERE -E ending. Aren't we talking about a place here? You can see the movie perfectly if you sit over there in that place over there. So this is the one that needs to be changed. We want T-H-E-R-E, -E, spelling it the best I can with my finger on the mouse. T-H-E, they all start with T-H-E. It's just the ending letters. Not so great printing. All right, T-H-E-R-E. -E. I'm going to fix that H. That looks silly. A little bit better. Okay, we're going to work on the suffixes together. Every day we've had a different one. This one that says circle the suffixes that mean more. And it says be careful. Look at all of the suffixes. They're all E-R. Is it possible that E-R doesn't always mean more? It does sometimes. 
but that's not the only thing ER does to a word. You might remember that ER is the one that turns a action into a person. So we have to see if we can say, does fuller mean more full? Like, fill my glass fuller, please. I want more. That one does. Bigger, does that mean more big? Like, you have a big dog, but my dog is bigger. It is more big than yours. That seems right. Remember that I'm circling just the suffix. Greener, does that mean more green? Like, since it's rained, the grass is greener than before. It's more green. That's what we mean. Smarter. Can smarter mean more smart? Like if you pay attention in school, you will get smarter. Like more smart than before? Mm -hmm. Writer. Does writer mean more right? Not this kind. Um, this is right, like a per um, putting pa pencil on paper and writing. This is a person who writes. It's not meaning more. This is a person who writes. That's what writer means. How about player? Does this mean more play? The player in the game made a great score. It's the person who plays. So those do not get circled. Some of them are the comparative, meaning more of a describer. The other two are nouns, people and connected to the action that they do. The writing and the playing are the actions. So that is our Wednesday. And you have two parts to do on your own to submit. And um, you can do that uh, in your Google Classroom. And then remember to turn it in after you've typed by the little pink uh, stars. You can click there and get your typing done. Thank you.